Oh, let me tell y'all a story about a man called Ted. He loves the multiplayer gaming podcast. He liked it so much, he now supports the show. He got some extra content, now he's having a blast. Hey guys, Michael here. If you're enjoying the content you get on this podcast, consider being like Ted. You can support the show and get bonus content by going over to MultiplayerSquad.com. We're an independent podcast, and we'd sure appreciate it. Now, on to the show! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast. If you are tuning in for the first time, welcome. We are a group of three dads that love video games, and we get together to release episodes every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. We would really appreciate it if you guys would rate our podcast five stars and leave a written review. And if you want to connect with us, you can find us on social media everywhere at Multiplayer Pod. We would always love for you to come join us on our free Discord server as well. On Discord, we share news and gaming recommendations. We solicit questions and feedback for the show. We even sometimes do giveaways. And if you want to join us there, just follow the link in the episode description. And then also, If you want to help support the show and get some additional content, like access to the Squadcast, which is a bonus episode that releases twice every month, you can head over to MultiplayerSquad.com to see our Patreon page where you can sign up to support. All right, today is Thursday, so that means it's time to break down This Week in Gaming by discussing recent gaming news. But first, I need to tell you who is here. I am your host, Paul. With me, he crashed his spaceship on a moon of Jupiter. He's fighting monsters for his life to survive out in space. It's Josh. Oh, those monsters are going down. <laughs> and also, yes, I would be the guy to crash the spaceship. <laughs> like, what's, what's this button do? <laughs> Miscalculated that uh, trajectory, yeah. huh? With the moon's yeah. gravity. <laughs> but I'm going down fighting, buddy. Fair enough. And then with us, the Amazon Game Studios lover is back. He can't wait to talk about more Amazon news. It's Michael. Why does Amazon make all, and I mean all, <laughs> of the great games out there? Let's Crucible. talk about them, guys. <laughs> yeah, Crucible. all of them. Yeah, and, and absolutely none of them are pay to win. Yep. Ever. Like, man. Flawless. Good stuff. I wish, good stuff. I wish Amazon was in charge of all games. The, I wish Amazon was in charge of my life. Wait, the Amazon kind they of is in are, charge of my yeah. life, actually. My wife say, yeah. and I have a subscription. <laughs> it's like they just, things just show up to our house every week. And I'm like, what? Wait, uh, all right, oh, wait, every week? Life. Oh, we're oh, every yeah. day. Yeah. We're no, every day. <laughs> <laughs> we know all of our Amazon drivers at this point. <laughs> yep. All right, so this week in gaming, we have a ton of news stories to talk about. I think this is going to be really fun. I think what we have to cover first is that Sony had a state of play, which is even kind of more important right now because there's no E3 this year in 2022. And so we got a look at some announcements and we got a lot of new footage about some games that we already knew were on the docket. And almost all of the state of play was about sequels or remakes. So I think we should start off by talking about the Callisto Protocol. You guys know how much I love having a brand new IP to talk about. And we got a two-minute trailer that included a little bit of gameplay for the first time. So we have brought up the Callisto Protocol in the past, but now we actually got a glimpse at the gameplay. How do you guys feel about the prospects of Callisto Protocol? Michael, actually, did you, I was going to say, did you ever play Dead Space? I, I, I didn't. We talked about this, I think, a couple of weeks so, ago just, with like the remember. remaster or whatever that yeah, happened. Uh-huh. Um, I'm excited about this one. I watched, I watched the trailer. I watched the gameplay, and I'm like, you know, this is this is. It, it just looks enticing to me. Um, I just, I love new IPs though so much. Like we just regurgitate all the time, like sequel, sequel, prequel, Street Fighter, prequel, Final semi prequel, semi sequel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like, this is like, hey, this is a new property that I, I think I can get behind. I just, I hope it doesn't suck, because I want to have something really good that's that's new and original to me. So, um, but I, I'm enticed by it. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I saw the trailer for this, and I got massive Dead Space vibes instantly. Paul, you yeah. and I actually talked about this a little bit, uh, you know, when we weren't recording, but it 
just feels like Dead Space to me. Which is a good thing. Be- it, oh, it's a great, it's a great thing. thing. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that the, was my question there. It's like, yeah. this is bad? Yeah. Well, the director of this game is Glenn Schofield, who is the same guy who created and directed the original Dead Space. And when I started reading some of his quotes, you know, because we know Dead Space was the scariest game made for the PS3 and the Xbox 360. That really is not even in question. And his quote was that he wants to make the scariest game on the next-gen platforms which he's already done in the past. He's trying to do it again for this generation. And as soon as you start watching the trailer, you immediately get the same mood and the environment of Dead Space. But these are new characters. It is a new setting, completely new storyline. And so I told Josh, it kind of feels like when you have a really good auteur movie director like a Spielberg movie feels like a Spielberg movie or a Wes Anderson movie feels like a Wes Anderson movie. This immediately harkens back to dead space in the best way possible where it's familiar. You feel like you're in good hands, but it's all brand new and I can't wait to play it. Yeah. I think we suffer so much from, from uh, non original property overload. For instance, look at Disney, what they're doing Star Wars. Like, Oh, one just came out and it's like, okay, but there's nothing new happening. Like, yes, there's new parts of the story and so forth. But And even though this feels like Dead Space, like you guys said, I don't know because I never played it. So I looked at this and I was like, this looks terrifying. <laughs> it looks awesome. I hope there's a VR port because I think a horror game like this in VR would be absolutely mind-bendingly oh. horrible. And I want to play that really bad. There's but, also a lot of jump scares in like Dead Space and Callisto Protocol looks to be the same. I can't oh, imagine yeah. that in VR. Yeah. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it uh, because I want to have to like take the headset off and just have the sweat pouring down my <laughs> face after playing for 15 minutes only because I'm so terrified. But I just I, I want to see new things like it's it's great. Like, you know, we, we, we love the things that we love, but we're also kind of tired of them. So this is cool. It's I don't know. I'm saying the same thing I said about five minutes ago <laughs> in the episode. I'm, I'm really excited about this one. And that's what I got. It's interesting to me because we've talked and covered the Dead Space remake that is looking very good, by the way. You know, I mean, so I I think like that looks great. And then we've got the Callisto Protocol, which is the, in all, you know, in all rights, the spiritual successor to Dead Space made by the original guy that made Dead Space. And so. You know, it's like which if you guys had to pick, which one? Oh, easy. Which, are, you know, are you more excited about the remake because man, that gives people the chance to play Dead Space, and you know it's nope. good. Or are you more excited about Callisto Protocol? Ooh, give me that the new OG stuff. property. Yeah. See, yep. I'm the same way. There you go. But but what? But but see, then in the same vein, just to argue because I love arguing, like Callisto Protocol <laughs> could suck, and we know that Dead Space is amazing. So. Well, I'm then, still if, with you, then if it sucks, I'll go back and play Dead Space instead. Yeah, it's a good time, man. <laughs> Honestly, I, like I, this. The video they showed off looked really good. the The feeling, Paul, you said it. It's like a Steven Spielberg movie, or you know, a, a, a Stephen King book, or something like that. It has that feeling, and it's almost immediately apparent when you watch the trailers that it's got that. Like even the UI, the minimum, like the like the like not having a UI, and the it's like almost like the camera angle. Like there's just so much that harkens to, hey, I can tell that this is the same guy that 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 made Dead Space, and it's not that far out, right? What's the release date on Callisto December Protocol? It's out this December, so we've only got a few yeah. months. Yeah. And I think if you're not really familiar at all with the Dead Space games and you haven't seen any clips of Callisto Protocol, basically the idea is that it's a sci-fi survival horror game. A guy crashes his plane on the Jupiter moon Callisto. He is saved from the wreckage, but it seems like there's some kind of mad scientist running tests and creating monsters. And so it does look like there's a lot of different weapons. We see pistols, electrified batons, and he's running around fighting off these monsters. Who really knows what's going on? I think that'll be part of the fun is figuring out why this guy is doing what he's doing. But it looks incredibly creepy. There's parts where there's like mutilated, there's like a mutilated monster and he walks right past it. And as soon as he passes, the eye moves and follows him. And it's stuff like that that I'm like, oh, this game's going to be super creepy, but it's also going to be action packed, which is, in my opinion, the best way to combine 
video games and horror is make it an action horror movie. And now you're talking my language. So yeah, yeah. you could almost call it like, uh, Resident Evil in space kind of is, is what you could say, which I think is a good segue because we got some other news in the state of play that Resident Evil four is being remade. And what makes it, I think a little bit more interesting is that they said that they are going to be reimagining the storyline, which really implies that they're going to be adding to it. It's not just going to be a remaster and a new coat of paint. It does seem like they are going to be adding, whether it's cutscenes, missions, maybe some stuff that was scrapped originally they're going to put back in. Who really knows? But I don't know about you guys. I, this is by far my favorite Resident Evil game is number four. And I, I'm really excited. Four is amazing. I, it's weird because I'm at the point now where it's been so long since I have played Resident Evil 4 Me too. Yep. that I don't remember a whole lot about it. Now, if I sat down and started playing it, obviously, I'm like my brain would be like, oh, yeah, okay, like we remember this. But, you know, here we are, another remake of a beloved game coming out. Eh, you know, Michael, you said it. We're kind of lacking on new IPs and new ideas right. and stuff like that. So I'm a little torn because it's like you're taking what is one of the best Resident Evil games and you're remaking it and you're going to really spiff it up so that people can play it and enjoy it, a la Dead Space Remake. But at the same time, it's like I it's hard for me to get super excited but then it's been long enough that this remake might seem like a new game because I just don't remember a whole lot about it at this right. point. And not to contradict myself from a few minutes ago when I talked about just exhaustion from remakes and sequels and prequels, I see this as a director's cut. When, when Paul was talking about film a few minutes ago, this is a director's cut of Resident Evil 4. And yes, please. Please. Oh, sweet. Please. It's like all... 27 director's cuts of Blade Runner. I've watched and I love them all. <laughs> and give me this. Give me this Resident Evil 4. Give it to me right now. And uh, I'm excited. I, I And again, like I'm, I'm tired of the exhaustion of sequel and prequel and remakes. But at the same point, like this this was a good game. It was a great game. It's been a long time since I played it. But I, I do want to play this right right now. So... Yeah. Well, and we know that they already added VR support to Resident Evil, I think a year or two ago, which I have not played yep. because the idea of doing that actually does terrify me a little bit. Yep. I don't normally get scared in video games, but with the jump scenes and the fast action of Resident Evil 4, like that, that to me is what sticks out. The Resident Evil games were a little bit slower and more survival based. Four is when all of a sudden these creatures are, are sprinting at you and you have to be way more cognizant of all of your surroundings in front, behind, left and right. And I feel like in VR, this one might be a little bit too scary. So I haven't tried it. I'm just going to wait for this remake and see how that goes. But this remake will be releasing on March 24th, 2023. So this one's still a little bit further down the road. I'll tell you what, I've got a very strong constitution, okay? I'm a tough guy. Not not really, actually. I'm scared of everything most of the time. My own shadow scared me yesterday. Um, but I will circle back to this. I will try I will try Resident Evil in VR because I haven't done that yet, and it's been on my short list of things that I have to do. I'll let you guys know next week what I think, and I'll let you know how many times I poop my pants or pee in the shower. We'll visit you in the hospital after your heart attack. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, and then the last thing that we'll mention here with the state of play, I don't know about you guys, I didn't really care about Street Fighter and Final Fantasy. Oh, There's no. news. See, Street Fighter looked good to me. It man. looks good. I just uh, didn't, didn't I, care. I don't really care that I much. I know you guys don't care as much, yeah. but yeah, it, it's definitely a different art style, and it's very weird. It's almost got like an open world wandering aspect to Street Fighter Six. We won't get into that. Which but is weird. I, color me interested in that one. I haven't played Street Fighter in a long time. I would probably get my butt kicked if I even <laughs> attempted it at this point. Um, but yeah, a little yeah. rusty in 2022. Oh yeah. yeah. So I think the last one that kind of piqued our interest is the fact that Marvel's Spider-Man has been remastered yes. and will be released on PC. Yep. And then they also confirmed that Miles Morales, which by the way, is not even two years old, which was a major PlayStation exclusive is now coming to PC as well. So Spider-Man will be coming out on August 12th. And then Miles Morales, we're not sure when, but it will come out later this fall. Give me I've, all of it. I've never played any of the Spider-Man games because I haven't had a PlayStation, and they all look like they're a lot of fun. 
And I love the fact that Sony, who has always been just the sticklers for their exclusive games on the PlayStation only. Uh, it's funny because a lot of people commented on the Sony state of play and they called it the Sony PC state of play because everything is coming to PC, which makes me happy, boys. I <laughs> wrote down in my notes, do you even need a console anymore now that everything comes to PC no. within a couple of years? Yep. Nope. God of War? I mean, don't... It's on PC? Yeah, I mean... Right. Uh, Returnal? It's gonna be there. Returnal is coming out on PC. Spider-Man? Like, I don't know that you really need a PlayStation anymore. And on Xbox, all of it is already on PC. So, I don't know. I I was gonna say, I might be tempted to sell my PS5 after God of War Ragnarok oh, buy comes it. out. Uh, I was gonna wait, wait, wait till Ragnarok, yeah. Paul. Let's not get crazy after, here. <laughs> How much do you want for it? I'll buy it right now. After Ragnarok, I think I might just be done because you don't yeah. really need a console anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I still prefer like <laughs> that's the like whole thing for me. Console. Like yeah, like like I'm a. Uh, I mean, Paul. Hey, you know, I know you're getting rid of your your PlayStation Five. That's terrible. <laughs> I don't want it either. But if you want to sell it for really cheap, nobody's gonna want to buy it. I'll go ahead and just get it off your hands. Yeah. But, uh, no, but but going back to these games though, it's funny because a lot of comic book games and games that are based off also movies that are comic book superhero movies typically are not good. With the one caveat being is all of these Spider-Man games are incredible. Yeah, they're good. And so, like, this is great. And then my thing, too, is that the what, what, what makes my ears so excited to hear about going from PC or console to PC is the fact that there's going to be some mod support, probably, because you can mod almost any PC game. And I just, I love the fact that, like, even if the game is not done perfectly as far as certain graphics and shading and lighting or whatever that i can i can do things with it and that's just i just i'm, I'm really excited and i'll play this game again because i played it back in in the day and about two years ago they just have uh, to get the ports right there's nothing worse yes. than a really bad port to pc and we've seen some successes and we've seen some failures uh horizon zero dawn had a very bad pc port initially it, they fixed it and it's perfect now um but it started off pretty rough and you know god of war like we talked about it when we did the deep dive on that that's the best pc port i think i've ever seen like it was absolutely flawless in that regard so you know if you're bringing these beloved games from your console to the pc world please take the time to get it right like apparently some companies are very good at this and others are not man and just like this isn't some rando game that you're saying, oh, yeah, you can play this on PC now. Like, we're talking Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> so get your port right. You know, that's all right. I ask. I'm willing to wait for it because I've waited this long and I've never played Spider Man, you know? And so it's like, just take the time you need to do a good PC port because if not, man, it can really ruin a game. Yeah. I think as we see more and more of these PlayStation games coming to PC, I think we'll see the quality improve over time. I, I, yeah. I don't really doubt that this will probably be a pretty good port. All right, next news story here. This one might spark some emotion. I'm not too sure how you guys feel about this. Diablo Immortal has officially released. This is the famous Diablo game that was announced at BlizzCon to a lot of boos. A person in the audience actually said, you know, is this a a late April Fool's Day joke? Like, someone actually asked it publicly. Uh, What, you guys don't have phones? All right, it's now out. It is available. It is free to play. There are a lot of microtransactions available in the game. How do you guys feel about Diablo Immortal at this point? I don't care. One I just, bit. yeah. <laughs> I just, I just don't care. It's, I don't know why I don't care. Oh, I, I know what. I know why I don't care because it was intended to be a mobile game and I don't do mobile gaming. And yeah. I know that I know that it's playable on PC right now. Like I know that I can, I, I played Overwatch earlier today and it, the pop up says, Hey, Diablo Immortal, you can play it. And I go, Yeah, never mind. You know, <laughs> and so it's like, give me Diablo 4 where it's made for Please. PC. And I have a lot of interest at that point. Don't give me a game that you designed for mobile. Make it available on the PC. I know that it's absolutely riddled with microtransactions. I just have zero interest in it, to be honest with you. And I've been keeping up with the news because that's our job, right? And it's like, I I feel like the backlash 
to this game is extreme. Uh, I mean, front page of Reddit is to get a max level character into Diablo Immortal, it could cost one hundred and ten thousand dollars to wow. get your character maxed out with the way that they've like tuned all these microtransactions and stuff. Now that said, I have not played it, and I know that there's one of us that has. What if I tell you guys it's crazy fun and it's really good on PC? No, don't. I have enough stuff to play, it's just, Paul. I don't want to. I don't want to play this look, game. Like, like, <laughs> uh, Josh. I think to a certain extent, you've got this hang up about mobile games, but mobile phones that are out today are like legitimately on par with like the gaming PC you had like six years ago. All right, sure. when you load up Diablo Immortal, which by the way is twenty seven gigabytes on your PC. There are some things wow. that you can tell, okay, yes, that's a little bit pixelated on my 1440p monitor on a mobile screen. I'm not going to see any of that at all, but it does not look bad on PC. It is perfectly acceptable. I have not played it a ton. I think I'm only level 15. I've been playing as a necromancer. I did install it on my phone and I played it a little bit because it's all cross. You know, you log into your Battle.net account on both and it saves all your progress. I mean, it's it's just another Diablo game, and if you just want to experience the story, they said you can play 100% of the story, not pay a dime for any of the microtransactions. If you want to be a tryhard and you want to get every achievement and you want to fight on the global leaderboard, yes, you will have to pay an arm and a leg or you have to play it for 10 years. I think the backlash to this is completely unfair. The way I see it is, look, we can be given... Okay, okay, obviously, we'd all prefer Diablo 4. I'm not debating that, right? This right. is a stopgap between Diablo games. If I can have Diablo 3.5, it's almost like, would you rather everybody pay $20 for this game or trap a couple of super rich people who are willing to shell out $10,000 or more into microtransactions and everybody gets it for free? Like, I don't think it's bad in and of itself that it has microtransactions as long as it's not required to do what you want to do. I'm not trying to do PvP global ladders. I couldn't care less. I'm going to play it for free, and if I really like it, I'll set aside a budget. If I look at the game and say, you know what, this is a game I would pay 30 bucks for, then maybe I'll spend $30 in microtransactions and then just stop playing. That That's at least my thought. I think the backlash to this is actually a little bit unfair. All right, so the part of that that I heard that I that I actually kind of relate to on that, because um, I haven't really, I haven't really, obviously, I haven't played the game. I don't want to play the game, and now I kind of a little bit of interested in it. Um, <laughs> how how? Oh, my Deck God, come Kane, visit. You me. have no friends. <laughs> how many years between Diablo two and Diablo three? Twelve years, ish. It was F- a while. fifteen years. Yeah. And so when you say, well, I mean, Diablo two was what? 1999 I can, fa- right? I can fact check it while you're talking 2000 diablo yeah. 2 released in 2000 and diablo 3 was what 2017 uh, 2018? 2012 20- for diablo yeah so 12 years was it that long ago it's actually it was like actually 11 years wow. and 11 months all right so yeah so when you yeah. say diablo 3.5 like it's like okay i kind of do want to see the story now um Paul, does it play like a Diablo game? Is it that three quarter view over the top? Is it is it is it does it feel like a mobile game when you're playing it though on the PC or does it feel like a Diablo game? Mobile games have come incredibly far. Go watch gameplay of Apex Legends. And other than the fact that they remove some buildings and some crates to like, you know, ease up how much it has to load. You can run Diablo on my phone in 60 frames a second, and it looks exactly like the old Diablo games. When I play it on PC, I use WASD to move my character around. I click for my basic attack, and I hit 1, 2, 3, 4, and swap out my spells. It's got the exact same inventory system as before. I I mean, I I get that some people just hear you have to spend $100,000 to max out your character. Okay, yeah, that's true. But you don't have to do that. It's not pay to win the campaign. Right. So if all you want to do is play the campaign, you can play it for free. I think this is great. Go ahead. Let the rich people pay for all of us. And I'm okay with that. And that's all I care about. Like when I played Diablo 3, I played it through twice. 
I played once the campaign by myself. I played it all the way through with a couple of friends because everyone knows the Diablo experience is a lot more fun with friends, right? It's fun to play oh, with your with your friend group. Can you do the same thing in this game? Can I play Absolutely. with you, Paul, right up, now? Up to eight people, Michael. There's <laughs> guilds, there's raids, there's everything that you love about Diablo is in there. All right, I'm really sorry, Josh, but I'm kind of leaning towards <laughs> Team Paul at this point because uh, t- <laughs> I'm, I'm back on Team Paul because I, I want to play more Diablo. I, I mean, I, d- I do too, but here's the question. Why it, like, why should I play Diablo Immortal over Diablo 2 you know, remastered? Because you've already played that it's one. New you content, it's a new story. One. Yeah. I mean, Tyrael I has already destroyed the world stone and it's been shattered. There are pieces all around the world and all the evil forces are trying to get the shards. And so you are running around fighting all the demons first to get all those shards back. You know, Deckard Kane explains all the lore to you and you're sent out to do all this. Um, you know, sure. If you want to just play Diablo 2 remastered, you can. Uh, I, I have really enjoyed dabbling into this. Now I'm still pretty new in it. Like I'm somewhere around two to three hours of playing. So four to five hundred bucks so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely not. I don't spend money on mobile games, anything beyond five bucks. That's my rule. Uh, I just, I don't spend a lot of money on, on, on mobile games in general, but I feel like calling something a mobile game to me, now now sounds old-fashioned and outdated. I don't think there's so, such a thing as a mobile game anymore. When you see Diablo, you wouldn't even think that it was first made for mobile, other than the fact that the graphics aren't quite at the level you would expect for Diablo 4. So, yeah, Diablo was never a graphic-centric game no, anyways. No, it wasn't. No, no. Right. It's more yeah, atmosphere and action-based, right? But yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen clips of apex legends gameplay on mobile it it's it's almost indistinguishable from the smoothness and the gunplay you almost can't tell that it's mobile you know so i don't know i feel like calling something a mobile game is almost like on the on the downward trend where i don't know that we'll always make that distinction for much longer can you party up in diablo immortal yeah, yeah. You, you oh. add friends, and you can have yeah. See, that's and party uh, that's where I'm at right now. Is I'm that's like, well, the shoot, best wouldn't it be see, fun to play with you guys? Di- Di- <laughs> that's the whole thing, man. Diablo with friends is incredible. Diablo solo best. is not nearly as fun. It's fun one time through. You find out what happens. You never do it again. My concern with this is like part of my issue is I mean I'm we've talked about this with free to play games. I don't begrudge anybody making money, especially if you're going to give me a game that I can play for free because I'm the I'm the kind of person that developers hate in that regard because I don't generally give you any money and I'm like hey thanks for this free game. We're leechers, you know, right? Exactly. But <laughs> yeah. you know, there's other people that make up for that and that's fine. So there is a part. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's raising his hand. Right. There, there <laughs> There is guy, a part yeah. of me that's like I love Diablo. Like on it, like I love Diablo. I've loved every game in the series. You know, maybe I'm being biased because I know that they developed this as a mobile game. Maybe I'm angry at them still for their stupid presentation where they were like, "Hey, so Diablo awful. for phones," and everybody went, "What?" And yeah. I was one of those guys that went, "What?" Like I'm not playing it was your stupid mobile game, you know. And so maybe I'm just being stubborn. It's, that's very, very possible. So because I do feel like I have this resistance to want to play this game. On that same vein, if it's Diablo and it's free and it seems fresh and new with friends, that's kind of hard to pass up at the same time. That's my argument. It's not Diablo 4, right? Diablo 4 would be bigger and better, but it's not bad. Like, I got so excited when I launched it, and they're like, do you want to play Necromancer, Demon Hunter, Wizard, Crusader, Barbarian, or Monk? And I was like, dang it. I love these ar- <laughs> these action <laughs> RPGs. They're just so much fun. I picked up Necromancer. I kill stuff. I make all their corpses explode. It's pretty fun. <laughs> I feel like we just spent the last 10 minutes of this podcast doing a Diablo Immortal commercial because Paul just legitimately he did sold kind of sell me. me on it I he know. sold me on Darn it and i don't Paul. and yeah. i it was my it was only my own stubbornness at first that was like i'm not playing a mobile game because mobile games are dumb and i'm like wait a minute can i play with my friends yes is it the still the same type of game yes does it have a story yes and i can party with my friends we already said yes i want to do it right now and you can play it on pc and it does play better on pc yep. it's easier but you know Stupid. if you plug in a controller into your phone you can do that too so you know can you Whatever. do that oh yeah, yeah you sure can. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, they still you controllers seen for the, mobile uh, games. Do yeah, you've even seen the things where it makes it look like a Steam Deck even, where you have like the dual controllers, and so it's like you're playing uh, like a Switch or a Steam Deck and stuff, too. They Speaking of which, of I stuff. still haven't gotten my email yet, and <laughs> I I literally signed up for the for the Steam Deck the day the pre-orders were available. Still haven't Still no notification, email. huh? Yeah, the last I saw it was like a year and a half out. Uh, yeah, you might you might be waiting a bit still. <laughs> well, yeah, out. we're not being paid by Blizzard. I, I wish we were, but we're this not. is just a free commercial for Diablo Immortal. I, I've been enjoying Blizzard, it. Blizzard, if you like what you've heard so <laughs> far, <laughs> please go to joindesquad.com. Uh, there you go. Join, that's, the that's, squad. That's, join the squad. Wait, what? Be a legendary <laughs> supporter. Just, just go uh, wherever you want to go and do whatever you want to do and give us money. <laughs> All right. And uh, I know that we're running out of time, but we got to bring up the Amazon story since I referenced it with Michael's introduction. We did get news this week that Amazon is going to be publishing the next game developed by Disruptive Games. Now, you may not know them by name, but they are the people who made Godfall. And ironically, they are the ones who remastered Diablo 2. So we don't know a whole lot about what this game will be, but it is going to be a new IP. They do say that it'll have online competitive and co-op elements. I know for me... What I find odd in this story is that everything that Amazon has released has been bungled in one way or another. None of their releases have been great. No. And you look at Godfall, which launched with the release of the PS5. People were really excited. Everybody who played this game just kind of no mediocre out of it yeah i was gonna yeah. say mediocre yep. at best at and that's the kind of game that is right up my alley because i love a good combat game and i remember when godfall came out and then i started looking at it and i just kind of went this looks mad there's nothing about godfall that interests me like why would i play that over dark souls yeah. you know or any other combat game dark siders huh. which is great you know it's like I, I just there's something about godfall that really just didn't seem to click with people and so when this article is funny because you take Amazon Games, who's had a history of terrible launches and game releases, and then you've got this studio that released a meh game like Godfall, and then the only other game is Diablo 2 Resurrected, which is a meh remake, you yeah. know, and it's like, this is, not make a, the game. this is not a good pedigree <laughs> to go by, and now you're combining forces. <laughs> Wait it's, a minute. It's kind of funny to seek them out. I, I looked on Metacritic, and I looked at the user scores for Godfall. It's 1.8 on PS4, 3.8 on PC, and 4.2 at its best on PS5. All of those are considered generally unfavorable reviews. I don't know why Amazon kind of like set their targets on this studio, but if they're going to be gobbling up studios and publishing their games and probably meddling and screwing stuff up, I guess it's kind of a match made in heaven. I'm glad it's them and not another Mm. indie developer that I care more about. There must have just been some financial reason on the back end that made sense for these studios or for the these two entities to come together. Because like, what do you got? Terrible games with the studio that makes it. <laughs> and then the publisher, Amazon, rifled with microtransactions. So now we got a terrible game that's going to cost you a lot of money. Good job, whales. Go, go spend your money on these. But there's got to be some reason why this made sense for them to get together. I am not interested. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, if it ends up being a great game that gets great reviews, then I'll perk up and pay attention. But I, yeah. I just think this is a little bit of an odd pairing, at best. It's very, odd. it's weird. Yeah. It's yeah. you have two two things that do not have a history of being good combining forces. It's kind of like my my initial reaction. Well, that's not going to be good. Yeah, very strange. And uh, I know that we don't really have any time to dive into it, but I did at least want to tell everyone out there that Dark Tide which we have talked about on the show as being one of our most anticipated games. This is the uh, Vermintide-type game taking place in the future. It is set for release on September 13th, and it will be $40 for the regular edition, $60 for the Imperial edition, which comes with some extra cosmetics and premium in-game currency. I know that that'll definitely be a deep dive that we do down the road, because we have been huge fans of the Left 4 Dead and Vermintide series. We love Fat Shark. Yep. I'm glad Amazon's not publishing Fat Shark's next game, yeah. but uh, Dark Tide <laughs> will have that release date of September, which is only three months down the road. Yeah, I have to go. I have to go back in time for a second to the article we were just talking about with Amazon and uh, Dark uh-huh. Tide. 
it's i was just thinking in my head like like let's equate this to movies what are like the two it's like having uve bowl make the next star wars movie things that are just not good and putting them together (laughs) are you calling out all the star wars fans michael well the new star wars movies aren't good (laughs) spoiler Uh, alert obi-wan's terrible go watch it waste uh, your time sorry oh there's gonna be some yeah star wars that. fans direct all of your questions at uh michael the butler michael michael does not speak for all of yep. us by the way hit me up on discord my twitter is at mr butler jr just come at me guys i made a oh, stone very nice so all right well that's it for this week in gaming we will have our next episode on saturday which will be a quick take and then on monday we will be deep diving v rising which i feel like that's been a long time coming that'll be a very great one episode yeah oh yeah you guys remember the last deep dive that we did on the best game ever called elite Dan- never oh, oh, michael's never gonna recover uh, from cut that. cut <laughs> i still hurt my soul <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah just just leave it in <laughs> cheers everyone thanks All for right. listening see everybody